Over three decades ago, two brothers set out on an audacious plan to build a township on the outskirts of Mumbai. Today, Hiran Nani Gardens at Pawai is a landmark township that many others aspire to emulate. I caught up with one of the principal architects of that vision, Niranjan Hiran Nani, to understand the reasons behind setting up a township as well as the challenges associated in executing it. But can you tell us why you chose this piece of land? Because other developers, much more experienced than you at that stage, had seen the land and rejected it. So what attracted you to this piece of land? So there's a background to it. I was building buildings in Lokanwala complex in Andheri. And every time I completed a nice building, I looked out of the balcony of that building and I was so disappointed with what was around the building. No good roads, no street lights, no water supply, um, sewerage water all around and etc, etc. So I'm making a nice building. Other people can see my nice building, though the people who buy a house from me don't see a nice outlook. Mm. So I realized that I needed to create an atmosphere where you not only made the building that you were selling, but also everything around it. So I needed a large piece of land. And at that point of time, this was so far away that uh, nobody wanted it. Everybody said no point. For me, this was like a large canvas that I could probably do all my dreams and aspiration of making not only the buildings where you would stay, but also everything around it, including gardens, schools, hospitals, everything. So, and this was available. It was far away. It was cheap as compared to what it was in Andheri. And uh, I had very little money. So I borrowed money and then borrowed this, uh, bought this piece of land. But that time, capital was even a lot more challenging than it is today. The rates were 24, 36%. Uh, how did you crack the funding structure to make such projects viable? So you are absolutely correct. You hit it on the debt. I borrowed money at 2% per month. Okay. So uh, it, was, it was horrible. But uh, there was no other funding available. No banks and financial institutions would lend money. There were no other resources available. And, uh, but we had strategies in order to pre-sell buildings. And in those days, we worked out a strategy wherein uh, we sold a lot of the apartments when we started the buildings. And by doing that, we were able to fund these buildings much easier than otherwise. And uh, slowly but surely, the returns paid out and uh, it was very sad actually sometimes. I would make a nicer building than my neighbor, but since I didn't have the brand name in those days, those people sold at higher prices. I sold at lower prices, but I sold a better quality building. Hmm. But the future made up for it. So now, you know, uh, I, I can demand the price of what quality I deliver. So what were the sort of prices you launched at? Just I sold at uh, 241 rupees a square foot, the first building. Carpet. Oh, right here. Okay. <laughs> 241 rupees. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was 1987. No, built up, saleable, sorry. Saleable. So yeah. 1987, this is. Yeah, 1987, correct. And, and I think till the mid-90s, the rate had not jumped substantially. It was after mid-90s it picked up. No, it didn't pick up. In fact, there was a setback in, uh, I think, around 1991. I built uh, another extraordinary building called Lake Castle, hmm. right over here. Uh, you can't see it, it's just behind one of these buildings uh, hmm. over here. And uh, beautiful building, it won an international award for architecture and I was selling it at 850 rupees a foot. And it took me two and a half years to get customers for that building. And today it's reselling at 35,000 rupees a square foot. If I had kept five apartments for myself at that time, which foolishly I didn't, yeah. I would have made more money in that five apartments than the 200 apartments which I sold. So when you just look at this wide expanse of land, uh, you of course succeeded in a fabulous way in the overall scheme of things. Was there ever a point where many people who said you're project was crazy. You started the thing the same. Where have I got myself into? Did you ever think that? No. My dream was very clear. My end objective was clear. Uh, actually, I didn't even tell my own family 
as to how much money I'm going to pay for the whole plot. They also thought that I had bought a smaller plot than actually I had bought. Okay. So I had to do several documentation so that I could disclose to them, you know, piece by piece of the area that I had bought. Uh, because it was quite crazy buying 250 acres of land. I mean, nobody did it in those days. Mm. And uh, for me, uh, it was an aspiration and a dream. So my objectives were very clear. Of course, everything changed over a period of years as to what composition of buildings, composition of commercial, retail, uh, hospital, schools and everything got developed. Those changed every time. The sizes of buildings, flats, apartments, all those changed. But the concept of creating a, a township hmm. which is complete and beautiful. Hmm. Let me tell you, I was born in Malabar Hill. My father was a very, very eminent doctor and we lived all our lives there. I studied in Campion School. My father was a doctor going to Breach Candy, Bombay Hospital, Just Lok and all those hospitals and having a, a very, very big name. When I was making this, I, it came to my mind that this place, Pawai, should be better than Malabar Hill. And so everything that I made in Pawai has to be with the mindset that it should be better than any building in Malabar Hill or my school in Campion or my hospital, Bridge Candy. This has to benchmark with that. Not in terms of competition, but in terms of having an aspiration that, you know, this is what I want to do. While people said, oh, your extended suburbs, why do you need to make a beautiful building there? So the idea was not that. I said, whatever we create should be looking beautiful. And of course, we lost money in the beginning because uh, people didn't believe that we would make what we wanted to make, even when we told them. You know, mm. and uh, but that's okay. That's history. So you mentioned about your experience with the, the school. It should be campaign. It should be as good as the campaign school of South Bombay at Kalaba. Uh, when you try to get these institutions, schools, hospitals, what was the reaction like? <laughs> Nobody believed me, uh, and they said, "I think they thought I was mad. How can you get a school as good as campaign in Pawai? Uh, how can you get?" A, hospital like Breach Candy or Just Lok or something in Pawai. And uh, for me, that was the objective. So when I said, all right, I'm giving you this land of the school free, just build a quality school, uh, nobody was willing. They would make a school, but it would look like a third rate school. And uh, they weren't willing to invest into it. And just have a look at the school building. Mm. Even today, after 30 years, it looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, and look at the hospital, uh, inside, outside, services wise and all that, it's probably the best in Mumbai. So basically it was, it, it, it was more that you had no other option to build it yourself, you took it upon yourself exactly. and outdid expectations. Exactly. So you absolutely hit the nail on the head. I just didn't want to do everything. Hmm. My purpose was to be a developer. Hmm. 